What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have breaking news from the National Hurricane Center. Lee has been strengthened into a hurricane. It is now a Category 1 hurricane on the Saffir-Simpson scale. It is moving west-northwest or 295 degrees at 14 miles per hour. The pressure has sunk further to 991 millibars. And its, current loca- and its current location is 14.9 degrees north, 46.4 degrees west, likely to intensify into an extremely dangerous major hurricane by early Saturday. So that's the situation we have right here. Watches and warnings. No coastal watches or warnings are in effect. Interest in the northern Leeward Islands should monitor the progress of the system right here. So we'll have to pay attention to that as time continues to go on. Here we go. Hurricane force winds extend outward up to 15 miles from the center. And tropical storm force winds extend outward up to 90 miles from the center. So the system is continuing to organize. It is continuing to strengthen as we've been talking about. The cone has not updated yet. We're going to go ahead and show you the discussion though because we know for a fact that's updated it is now it's still forecast to strengthen at uh, the max of 150 miles per hour however 120 hours out it is forecast to go we start weakening slightly to 145 miles per hour according to the national hurricane center however we've been looking at a lot of models that are indicating that this thing could potentially get up to Category 5 strength while it is out to sea. And we have other stuff that we need to get go over as time continues to go on and as we get more data. So here's the situation right here. This is the European model we have pulled up right here. This is the 12Z European as we continue to show it. This thing continues to organize. It's already behind at this point. It's already a hurricane. So this thing moves, th- uh, moves north of the Antilles. It's going to bring some impacts right there. Most likely, the outer bands are going to hit the Lesser Antilles at this point. Although, we'll have to wait and see what happens. And if this thing moves further to the north or moves further to the south, we'll have to wait and see on that. But this thing continues to organize. And north of the Lesser Antilles, it is expected to continue to rapidly intensify. Gets down to a system of 927 millibars initially, six days out. Then it starts to fluctuate intensity, gets down to 924 while it's moving slowly to the west right here. And this is where the trough comes in, uh, comes in that may turn this system. So here's the situation. This is a ridge that's building up to the north uh, of the system according to the European model. There is a trough that's building up in the co- continental United States, rather, that is going to likely turn this system more to the north. So depending on how strong this ridge gets up here and how strong this gets over here will depend on the direction... Uh, on the direction of this track because let's say this thing gets a bit quite a bit weaker and this thing gets a little bit stronger that could push it further and further to the west however interestingly interestingly we may have an idea a possibility of this actually happening and this is what we have pulled up right here this is a quote teat f- tweet from matthew gross we'll go ahead and start by reading the original tw- a tweet soon to be major hurricane lee will traverse high ocean heat content ohc water east northeast of the leeward islands in puerto rico in the tropical atlantic over the next five days however slow moving large hurricane franklin wiped out the ohc thereafter amazing quote what is known as a cold wake which is basically where the ohc is completely robbed it's a lot colder than the rest of the ocean is this is typical with very slow moving systems over here so we'll have to wait and see what happens however this quote uh, this tweet from matthew gross says this oddly that code wake combined with the ventilation from lee assuming he becomes a high-end major cane hurricane in this case could work to strengthen the bermuda high in the mid-range in that spot more than the models expect if that happens not only would the, uh, that force Lee further to the west before his turn to the north, but it would ultimately get him beyond 72 degrees west, where he would miss the cold wake altogether and end up in even warmer, untouched waters. Fascinating wrinkle in this forecast. And what this also would do is potentially put this in the line of fire of the Bahamas right here. So here's what we have right here. This uh, The Bahamas start, uh, start around, I'd say, 75, 76 degrees west. So if we get a scenario where this cold wake and this extreme, uh, extreme how he, uh, how Matthew uh, puts it, extreme, um, uh, ex- yeah, extreme ventilation 
from Lee happens, especially if this thing becomes a high-end Cat 4 or low-end Category 5, this could help strengthen the Bermuda, uh, Bermuda High. There's a lot of dynamics involved in all that stuff that I'm not going to get into talking about this, but if that is the case and we see this trough weaken a little bit more, this thing's going to push further to the west. Potentially, see, uh, potentially we start seeing uh, some more impacts in the Bahamas. Potentially, start seeing uh, seeing a potential tr trend to the west where some of the some U.S. states get involved, like the Carolinas, Virginia, the Mid Atlantic, New England. This is a serious situation that we have to continue watching as time continues to progress through on out so that's the europeans latest model right here we'll go ahead and show you the gfs as well to kind of cross check this gfs continues to have this thing rapidly intensify a little bit more to the north than the european but the results are still the same gets up to a high-end category four hurricane before undergoing an eyeball replacement cycle and then starting to drift more and more uh, to the north however the system is according to the gfs expected to hit nova scotia and newfoundland most likely as an extra tropical cyclone that's 12 days out so so if you're watching it from Canada, please keep an uh, keep keep an eye out. But for now, take the models with a grain of salt. They've been pretty, at least track wise, they've been off quite a bit as the system d did once again move about 500 miles to the west instead of the west northwest as it was previously scheduled. So that's the GFS. Next one we're showing you is the CMC. CMC has this rapidly intensifying, continuing to strengthen. However, the CMC is actually being quite conservative compared to the other models. We're seeing like the 960s at the most compared to the Euro. We're at 920s, GFS 930s. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. I'm going to be honest when I say this. I think this is going to be a very high, it's going to be a high-end major hurricane. How strong We'll, f we'll get to that in just a second, but here's the CMC. Next one we're showing you is the nav gem. The 12Z is out, although kind of half uh, half out or so sort of. Nav gem has this thing moving. Gets down to the 940s, uh, 930s actually, before t starting that turn right there. But it's all going to be dependent on if that cold wake and the ventilation of Lee really start to kick in and start pushing this thing more and more to the west. So... That's going to be the big game changer right there. We'll have to wait and see what happens on that flank. Last one we're showing you is the Icon run. Here's the Icon continuing to show strengthening and intensification as time continues to go on. This thing starts to make that turn before it approaches the Bahamas. But we'll have to wait and see too, as, uh, as we've mentioned like a broken record, the whole situation with the cold wake and the ventilation. So that's our situation on that front. We're going to go ahead and actually show you the track models and intensity. Track models have actually pushed this a little bit more a further to the west before that turn starts which i think is pretty interesting to say at the very least primarily because of what's going of what's going on it might be catching on to the fact that this whole cold wake and how intense this storm is going to get may have this thing move a little bit further to the west if it gets to the point where like you said it's about 72 degrees west or so it's going to move out of that cold wake and it's going to move into much more warmer water which that also could potentially put some u.s states at play for potential impacts so that's a huge delicate situation we are going to have to watch intensity models have been holding at either category four or category five strength as of right now it's a cat 175 mile per hour system this thing is expected to intensify at an extremely fast pace primarily due to the warm water ocean heat content and low wind shear we're going to get to that in just a sec uh, just a second but i wanted to go ahead and take a look at these um these intensity models further almost all of them have this as a as a major hurricane almost all of them has it as a category four system and a few of them do have it up to cat five strength however we're gonna have to wait and see if this will actually get up there i absolutely think that's a, a huge possibility especially with the warm waters ohc wind shear and we'll go ahead and show you that right here warm waters 29 plus degrees celsius from where it is now all the way until the bahamas plenty of warm water for this thing to work off of insane amounts of ocean heat content where this thing is about uh, where this thing is about to move into is about to move into an area of 100 to 150 ohc it's in an area of about maybe 80 90 ocean heat content so it's definitely starting to increase pretty quickly 
So depending on how it uses all that water and depending on how it uses all that ocean heat content will really, quite frankly, depend on how quickly and how intense this thing will get. So this is kind of a, the waiting game at this point rather than the waiting game of where that will this go anymore or how uh, how this will strengthen or, well, not exactly that, but how this will develop. The waiting game is basically... How high can this go at this point? How strong can this thing get? And if you look at satellite, it already looks highly impressive for a Category 1. It has very good outflow, especially with that. And that's only expected to continue to grow and expand as time continues to go on. Wind shear, there is a little bit of wind shear, about 25 knots or so over here in the northwestern quadrant. However, it should have really no issues for this thing strengthening. I do think it's going to slow it down a little bit. However, I do th I also do think this thing's going to continue to rapidly intensify. This thing 24 hours ago was a 40 mile per hour tropical storm. Now it's a 75 mile per hour hurricane. So it's definitely me uh, met that criteria for rapid intensification, folks. Now we're going to go ahead and show you some model runs. Here's the HMON, HAFS runs, and HWARF. HMON has this thing continuing to intensify at a very fast pace, 48 hours out, expecting it to be a 966 uh, 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 millibar system in a low end category two hurricane. And then things really start taking off. Gets down to the 930 gets up to a Category 4 hurricane early on, potentially undergoes an eyewall replacement cycle. We're not 100% sure. It's some sort of fluctuation of intensity. Then things start to ramp up in intensity again, gets up to 130 mil, uh, not, uh, not surface winds, 150 mil, uh, mile per hour winds. Then things really start to get interesting. And we're looking at a 920s millibar system, according to the HMON. Winds are 135 knots, 155 miles per hour. A uh, high-end Category 4 hurricane as we continue to see that pressure drop. Undergoes some sort of fluctuation intensity, but still holds the pressure at 922. However, it looks like the wind field did expand quite a bit. So I'm thinking it underwent an eyeball replacement cycle at that point. So that's the HMON. We're going to go ahead and actually the, uh, the HAFSA. Here's the t uh, here is the 12Z right here. Things continue to rapidly intensify as time continues to go on. In the next 51 hours, it gets down to a category, it gets up to a Category 4 hurricane according to the HAFS A over here. It's a pretty small system overall. However, it is expected to expand in size. And it is, after this burst of intensification, it may undergo an eyeball replacement cycle. We're not 100% sure. Then things really start to intensify even further. Look at this. 917 millibars, 102 hours out. Uh, the winds are 148 knots. That's a Category 5 hurricane right there. If we go ahead and pluck a sounding really anywhere at this point, it's at least 130 knots in the northwestern eye wall. So that's a pretty huge situation right here. Then it gets down to 909 at one point. Look at the max winds. 147 knots. That's a 100 that's a 170 mile uh, 175 mile per hour system right here so that's a huge situation we have and this isn't just this model predicting that the halves b is also predicting it as well so we'll have to go ahead and pull that up for you guys this thing is continuing to rapidly intensify and check this out. Watch between the 48 hours and 96 hours. This thing gets down to the 950s, 940s, 930s, 920s. Uh, 96 hours out, we're down to the 911, uh, 911 millibars. Uh, max winds are 155 knots. That's a 180 mile per hour hurricane, according to the HAFSB. 906, 904, 898 at 162 knots. That is almost a 190 mile per hour hurricane for preference. I don't know if this is going to happen or not, but this is what the model is projecting 897. This right here would be the strongest hurricane by pressure in the Atlantic in the tropical Atlantic. That is pretty interesting right there. This is something we're going to have to keep an eye on especially we don't know if it's going to get down that low, but if it does, I just hope it stays out to sea, and that's all I'm going to say. We're closing the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Helps us out. Helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.